people are watching them, you know? Or, you know, did I go into my leader's office with a question and it was the end of the day and they were tired and I asked my question and as I turned a little bit, I noticed they rolled their eyes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If you're a leader and you roll your eyes and your follower sees you roll your eyes, you've just destroyed a huge amount of any credibility and trust you've built. And you can send out 14 press releases, but they're not going to make up for an eye roll. And it's going to take you a while to get that back, right? Um, if you, at the beginning of the year, if you're a leader and you send out your list of priorities for the organization, and, you know, the first one is improve market share by 14%. The second one is, you know, um, create innovative new product around blah, blah, blah. And you have seven things. And the very last one says, uh, help employees develop and because they are our most important asset. Mm -hmm. Well, if you've put them last on your list, they are not your most important asset. Mm -hmm. That's how they're going to feel. They're going to see your list and they're going to say, I'm the last one, right? So these little things, you know, what, what a leader has in their office, go into a leader's office and look around their office. I always say your office is saying much more about you than you, you ever want to say about yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Are there pictures of their family, of their kids? Or are there just book, you know, are there posters about success in business? Now, here's the thing. I'm not saying which one is right. I'm, all I say is that leaders need to be aware of these messages they're sending. And uh, because those speak really loudly and people are going to decide whether, they not, whether or not they want to follow you. I coach my students and we talk through it with a, a number of things. Number one is the old standby, which is prepare. Mm -hmm. You know, it sounds trite, but prepare and practice. You know, um, if you try to wing it, um, it typically will come off that way. However, yeah. don't, I would say, don't script yourself either. Mm -hmm. You know, you want to find that balance between structure and natural, you know. Um, I go up with a few bullet points to remind me of where I am in the flow. So I'll have a piece of paper with me, you know, just, it's, it's kind of a, I can refer to it. Some people think, well, I can't take anything up. Again, it's a natural style. Then the other thing I tell them is I call it the patented Warda breathing technique. <laughs> and, um, I don't actually have a patent pending on it. But it's, it's basically what we just talked about with meditation, right? It's just, you know, a few good centering breaths, you know, in, hold, out, slow. And, and you don't do it, you don't have to do it where people are seeing you, but just center yourself and remember that you have something you need to share. You, you want to share something. And, and I think the final thing I would say is, you know, just it's like we were just talking about with human communication just be sincere. Mm -hmm. If just think about speakers you go to see, right? If you see somebody up there who's passionate about what they're talking about, who's sincere, they're not trying to sell you their book at the back of the room every five minutes, you know, you tend to want to give them the benefit of the doubt and you tend to want them to do well, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the most important ways you can show courage is to make yourself vulnerable. And she does that with leaders, with teams, et cetera. So I'm, I'm a really big believer in that. Um, so I think it starts with vulnerability. Um, I think it, you know, basically, basically um, it's about, when I say being human, it's about being open, you know, um, being vulnerable, being honest, being kind. I think kindness is huge. Now, yeah, there's a lot of humans who aren't kind and, most humans are not kind at certain points, you know, but as much as possible. And, and really, it's a cliche, but putting yourself in someone else's shoes. Um, I like to think of it as putting yourself in somebody else's heart, you know? Oh, that's really cool. Like, you know, what are they experiencing? So, you know, I've got this communication I need to send out about a mergers and acquisition, right? We're about to acquire a company. Really important for our company for how we're going to be positioned. But the person reading that, 
what are they going to be thinking and feeling as they're reading it? You know, well, the first thing they're probably going to be thinking and feeling is, uh, is my job okay? Right. Mm -hmm. Then they're going to be thinking, are my colleagues' jobs okay? What about my family? You know, so it's just about, you know, those types of things and, and listening. So all those things together, for me, if you can make it more human, you have a much better chance of connecting in a real way with the person you're trying to communicate to and building the most important thing any communicator can ever find and create, which is trust. So, you know, trust is the currency of communication. So.